Yo, you got to walk straight through a door that I kicked open. I didn't even realize how nervous that made you. But last event put everything in focus. Cause you heckling me during the battle with Barry, while you watched him get split open, just proves how fucking terrified you are of this moment. Woo! So this tournament's like Pam Anderson and Michelle, just a couple of fakes getting washed. <laughs> These rounds are like the conflict in Israel, cause the pain never stops. Plus, what you gonna do when the game's 20 shots down? Break, sweat and flop. Run to your computer saying I got off stage when it drops. Crying about how the game's getting soft until your page getting blocked. Then do another lame, petty blog that only you and Jay Legend watch. <laughs> Man, grow up. <laughs> Yo, Grilly wants you to think I'm a hater for ignoring the quote-unquote shit he's done that he supposedly did for us. But truth be told, out of all the rappers from my era that he plans on bringing up, I was the only one out of all of us to give you love and wish you luck. It was a gut beef event in my city, and I saw you and bigged you up. This is before you were a backstabbing piece of shit, back when you were just picking up. The second I did, you started to diss me in all your matches. I was just thinking, huh? Bro, you must think I'm the man, cause your head got big as fuck! That's why people feel like they already seen a battle with me and him. Cause for two years flat he said my name in every battle that he was in. But I don't blame you, I'm almost angry at me for this. Cause I might be the reason you turned into this arrogant piece of shit. Yes! Yo, everyone would love a Britain flight, but he doesn't need a win tonight. Cause if you know anything about Greeley's life, to him, this battle is the prize. <laughs> so try convince him why you think you're the king, but you just kill in time. Do two rounds about me losing to Jay and Barry, and one round about how I'm not as sick as Prime, but either way, you're paying homage to that Ellipsis Shrine. Number 83. Yeah, no, I yeah, give it up for that round. Right. Make some noise, yo, don't front. Don't front. Don't shit. I rocked up today. To see my opponent, to realise that in my whole life I'm so scared of this moment. I mean, I mean, I mean you were late to rock up to the battle. Yeah, he was. You know, I don't want to even hear you rap, faggot. Battle and me's going to end up more detrimental to your health than Johnny Trash's crack habit. <laughs> catch a train for all, an hour all the way from Frankston just to diss you out on this battle stand. I just came all the way to Richmond today to say happy birthday to the cameraman. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Barry Bonza, you said you were going to shit on him violently. <laughs> Is that the type of situation that makes this idiot happy? So I came to Don't Flop today to say fuck O'Shea and the shark and they shat on. Purpose is so gangster that he once took a shit on a Barry. <laughs> That's raw. Crap form. You're a bad sport. <laughs> Why do you want to do that for? You need to stop thinking about giving Cleveland steamers to old men and focus on your rap more. Because you're not even that sure if this is battle rap or scat porn. Oh. Hey. Hey. Do you want to hear a true story? Yeah. Purpose used to have a missus. She liked fucking rappers. <laughs> yeah, he took her to the gigs and he was on stage all night busting tracks and she was in the crowd hooking up with five dozen lads and tried running them back like acting like nothing happened. I know somebody that hooked up with her. I know another five cunts that had it. They made her wet, made her scream, posted a video on the net and tagged in the next. We called her the Ice Bucket Challenge. <laughs> battling with us now but before you're only in it for yourself bruh and then I realized that this guy works at no wonder he wouldn't help you how do you expect to get help from anyone that works at just because you work in the center isn't why I called you out I was still gonna get a good connection this is my house cunt if I'm gonna use phone lines of course I'll get a good reception you're a fucking dog. You think the cop is a sweet. You were seen earlier today in your hotel with a motherfucking cop in your suite. You were having a casual yeah. conversation. You think chatting with the cop is a sweet. You come to Melbourne with that, you'll end up down in an alleyway on the back of Hoddle Street with nothing but a fucking shotgun to your forehead doing nothing but cop and a sweat. Oh. I'm only 
fucking joking around. But when I put the effort in, none of you can touch me. I put the effort in for this tournament. I can't even fucking leave the country. And they've done it. You're my best mate. You'll always be my buddy. But if you and I get through to the final, you can bet your big ears that shit's about to get fucking ugly. <laughs> Yo, the girl shit was alive at the work shit's true. Let's get to it. Yo, I am a shit kicker in an office, but he makes it sound like I'm a businessman. Fucking throwing his coffee across the room every time the printer jams. Like, like lunchtime rolls around and I have a cut sandwich with Virginian ham and I just sit at my desk eating it, thinking about scribble jam. <laughs> Fucking dickhead, man. <laughs> hey, you suddenly being this nice guy, king of the culture, just seems a little late. I mean, we remember your history, mate. Don't you think we see you constantly skipping states, switching place, and every time we see you, it's with a group of different mates? Ooh. Sit, Babu. Sit. <laughs> Used to kick it with dribs and chase, twiz and case, now you chill with rates and act like your old friends and you were never really mates because he's got a bigger name. There you go again with those bitch ass traits. Yeah. Sit, Babu. Sit. Oh. Hey, what are you mad at me for? Stop acting like you want to try my chin. Who am I going to get bodied by? You got a homicidal twin? We know you. I know you want to try and win because I punched you in the face during a battle. And you damn near apologized to him. <laughs> yo, yo, he gave you the Hanson. <laughs> He was like a professional pool player in a world comp because he marked your whole game out with the first shot. Mm. What a fucking sick bar. Anyway, <laughs> not even worth props. What makes you even think you're a rapper? No mixtapes, no albums, no dick and no talent. No hits and no fans, no charisma. This the only thing you've done for all these years as a rapper and I still shit on you at it. So what's really been happening? Come on, really, what's cracking? You've been drinking and slacking from the discipline lacking. Purpose walks back in the room, the whispers go flat and the mirrors all shatter. The realest we have, I did everything that you haven't and still came back to cut you a slice of his history. Just have it. Whoa. Your worst nightmare came true, some real competition adapted. So do your best not to fuck up and I promise, I'm gonna make this one a classic. Is it, just, is it just me? I'm realising this right now. Is this guy's forehead enormous? Is that the head of a tortoise? Are you an exceptional porpoise? Hey, porpoise. What's cracking, bro? You're, you're a fucking sad imposter. Rocking up again with boat shoes. No wonder this fag doesn't belong in the battle genre. I mean, when he, when he rhymes, he spits princess cut diamonds. And when he prints his lines, his grammar's proper. And his spare time, he walks around your local neighbourhood collecting garden gnomes that look like Barry Bonds. <laughs> Pagan ellipsis. You're a fucking dick boy. I'm surprised there's a couple of people that even believe in this prick. I guess because they have a purpose in their life, they somehow see it as bliss. And fuck it, and they see it as bliss. And when you don't have a purpose in your life, well, really, there is no reason to live. But we haven't had a purpose for ages, can't? And I'm pretty sure this scene still exists. You've been sitting in your office thinking about scribble jam. <laughs> yeah, you were you were grinding from the start, but apart from K21 and 360, all these other WRC faggots are dying in the ass. I mean, you said you were a cage fighter. But these days there's no way that you're fighting for the art. You might be back in Melbourne with a bit of a purpose now, but can't your prime was in your past. Yeah. You've been ignoring me for ages. You even blocked me on Facebook. What a fake petty cut. You've been jaded ever since Golden Era signed K21. <laughs> you, you, you paid your dues, made your moves, but failed to do what your mate had become. You always tried acting wise to get certified, but you failed making friends with some. You didn't get denied by trials, kind of unlike the battles that Jay Legend does. But now he hates everyone, but holds a brave face when they come to his show. But they know how ashamed that you are of fucking failing you've done. What? <laughs> And he, and, he thinks, and he thinks I'm an arrogant cunt. 
Like this is a walk in the park that you can step right through. Can't you are so up yourself, you get on the mic to test it like prostate check one, two. That's a wonderful cardigan. Time. Yo, imagine if I said some of that shit to the guys who came before me. The bias bees. Trials is in the deltas. Bro, I look like a fucking punk. As someone who understands respect, I'd expect some of them to knuckle up and want to fuck me up. Plus, why go out of your way to try to make people hate the guys you idolized when you were coming up? Mm. But see, I wouldn't do that, Greeley. Cause I'm not a fucking mutt, but at least you made the semis. You're the runner, runner, runner up. <laughs> Yo, regardless of what happens here today, you'll tell your friends you think you got it. You'll say, oh, I think I took a 2-1 if I'm honest. Really, stop it. You couldn't even take my spot when I didn't want it. Yeah, yeah, yeah my music is weak. Bro, maybe you need new speakers. You do should be proud of someone from the bottom made it to that next level that you up here reaching. When I left, I did the impossible. I showed you dudes how to be it and really move like a leader. I left a blueprint for you, bro. You were just too fucking stupid to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Seven years I watched and watched. You choke and try and go off the top. Then try to make the claim that you want my spot. But they'd have never called me for world dom if you were on your job. You guys were supposed to come after us and break new ground. Now they don't trust you, so I gotta come back and break you down. Set fire to the village and chase you out. The king of the shit's back in town. Who's gonna praise you now? Yeah! That's why I roll my eyes when he goes on those tangents like he don't know nothing. Cause you're the only dude here who feels like he's owed something. You feel entitled to these rhymes. You feel entitled to my time. You feel entitlement to justice. You feel entitlement to prime. You feel entitlement to all of us. It's time to get a life. You fell asleep on a job, Greeley. Rise and fucking shine! Yeah. You're, you're like a big brother to these other battlers, bro. And that shit's known. You're the loudest voice in the room. But only until Dad gets home. <laughs> and I'm ready for it. Damn, give it up for that round. Round fire. Round fire. Round fire. Go. Alright, I'm gonna start this off with my third round and make this clear. I know I got a pretty loud voice, but that's until Vamps gets here. Oh, yeah. yeah, straight up. Do you wanna hear a secret? Purpose's hometown is Snowtown. That's the place where they killed a couple of people and stuffed them in a rubbish bin. Just because a murder happened in a city, in a city near the one that this cunt was in doesn't mean he knows anyone that's ever committed such a sin. I mean, once upon a time in Adelaide, there was a secret satanic pedophile ring involved with the government, Rolf Harris, Bert Newton, Decoy, and some other disgusting pricks. <laughs> He's from the home of the wheelie bin murders, and to me that doesn't fit. Hey Barry, your hometown might be bro town, but this guy's hometown's known now for touching kids. But hey, hey, do you really fucking think that New Zealand is blood and soft? The next time you go to spend a week in the hot springs and chill out in your uncle's yacht, I hope a bunch of the mongrel mob catch you while you're waiting out the front while your mother shops, chuck you in a boat, drive a couple blocks down to the clubhouse and tie this cunt down to the bar naked to make him drink a dozen shots while they tell a pack of rabid hungry dogs from the back to attack while they come and suck him off. And I know a story, it isn't worth debating. He said Barry Bonds had chucked the coppers. Once he was working late at a local service station, a few lads rolled through with for an urn and made him empty the register with determination. You ran to the back, you gave him the cash, you started thinking of perpetrating, you opened your trap, you called the jacks. Purpose was quick to make a dirty statement. And I, know, I, know it's a bit, I know it's a bit of a different story, doesn't really seem like it's worth relating until you find out he was one of the kids got, that got touched by a cunt in the government while they worshipped Satan and fucking, you know how he's so proud of Snowtown in every verse when he states it? It's because I'm pretty sure all the murderers and pedophiles got caught from a cops. And after all that, I think it was bloody fucking purpose who made them. Yeah! Okay. You dick boy. 